When you're browsing some websites, you may find that they know what language you want and where you're located. For example, looking at a mapping website, or if you've stumbled across an advert for unsavoury services which seem to know where you are, or in fact don't exactly know where you are. So just how does the internet know this information about where you're located? Well, starting with the language, because this is an easy one, your browser tells them. So this is Wireshark, a packet capture program. So the information in red is your browser sending an outbound request, and the information in blue is coming back inbound from the server. Your browser sends a HTTP GET request, and it identifies what it is with the user agent. This is kind of essential for a website to be able to display an appropriate page back for your device. So it is identified me as using Ubuntu Linux with Firefox version 55. But it also sends language. This is the language of the operating system, which is ENGB, British English. So that is the language. Quite simply, your browser tells the website. Now for the actual location. Now just to cause utter confusion here, I'm using Tor and have an IP address exiting out of the Netherlands. So just where do some websites become located? Um, can't pronounce that. <laughs> in the Netherlands. Harlem, Netherlands. Selye in Slovakia. Wrong country entirely. My IP address. Now this information is going to be known to a website because it's going to be a connection established. So in that HTTP GET request, uh, the packet above it will be your IP address. So identified as anonymous proxy, funny old thing. When a company purchases an IP address range, it has to be logged as the company who owns it and the location. This is the geographic location and it is held by regional internet authorities. This is split out into various regions across the world between Africa, America, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and RIPE, which is Europe. An internet service provider, or ISP, will buy a block of addresses, and they may allocate them to various parts of the country. But this does not get it down to an individual city, town, road, house number, etc. No, it just allocates it to a certain area of the country, and we can see some of the geographic information from InfoSniper. This is using the data from the aforementioned internet authorities. So my IP address at the moment is anonymous proxy. This is a Tor exit node and it doesn't appear on the map anywhere. But what if I was to put in a couple of other IP addresses? So this IP address 216.58.21299 is registered to Google. And in fact we have a location. Postal code didn't seem to be quite correct but Latitude and longitude it was close, Mountain View, United States. So we have a Googleplex quite nearby, so yeah, close. But not so close for the BBC, which is using an IP address of 212.58.246.79. This is registered in Harrow, and I don't think the BBC is located there anymore. And the postal code information is incomplete, so... Not quite so correct there. Now for my actual IP address, it is way off by quite some distance. It has me located somewhere up here. And I'm not, I'm over here. <laughs> so yeah, quite a way off. So it doesn't know my actual location, but interestingly, Google does. So this is where we come on to secondary data sources. So we have, for example, the user submitted data, say for weather forecast, data contributed by internet service providers. I've not seen that particularly much, but yes, if you want to get someone's exact address from a broadband IP, you have to go to their internet service provider. This is information that has to be obtained through the courts. Another concept here with guesstimates based on network hops, this is trace route. It's a concept I can't easily demonstrate right now on my computer, but you send out packets with a very small time to live, and you see how far away it is relative to you. So you send out a time to live of, say, one, which will get you one hop, then two, three, which might get you to your broadband, and then so on until you reach the IP address you're trying to locate. So by that, you could start determining 
country maybe a position but really you need to triangulate it and go for trace routes from a few different locations another concept has been a geolocation api and it is more about using gps so this can be data obtained from a smartphone or perhaps data obtained from nearby wi-fi devices i think this is how google does it with wi-fi devices and certainly with using mobile tracking that when your mobile was last sending data out assuming you're using something like android when you were last sending data out to google it would have tracked your last location so it takes a few different sources to identify where you actually are and that's it um, the favorite one would be gps whether you allow that or not is another matter because you don't have to allow this geolocation api for all websites i certainly see no reason to allow it all the time Thanks for watching, see you all later.